Hey everybody, I'm Dean Sheely, Senior Security Consultant from High Point Networks, and thanks for meeting up with me today and my friend Matt in the Wolf Bar. Today we're going to explore why security operations are absolutely critical to a successful security operations center. So let's get started. So some quick relevant background on me for this episode. I'm a former SOC analyst and also a former CISO where I worked alongside an amazing group of men and women to build a security operations center. So my intent of saying that and my intent today is to pass some of those lessons learned on to you along with Matt's insight. So Matt, would you mind introducing yourself before we get rolling today? Sure thing, Dean. I mean, uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Matt Denick. I lead product marketing for our managed risk solution at Arctic Wolf. Um, I've been fortunate to have the opportunity over my 20 plus career, uh, year career in tech and marketing to work with folks, um, you know, my customers, partners, colleagues uh, from around the world and in person in more than 40 countries. And I've, uh, I've had the opportunity to uh, hold senior product marketing roles as well as cybersecurity and technology roles across a number of different organizations in, in telecom and smart mobility and cybersecurity. Um, and even financial services. So again, happy to uh, to join the Two Wolves in a Bar podcast uh, with our great partners, High Point Networks. All right, Matt, let's start out with a Wolf Bar joke. And it's, it's like one of those Jeff Foxworthy jokes. Okay, you ready? If operations aren't at the center of your security operations center, you might be a But it, seriously, it's it's this whole idea that businesses don't have a tools problem, they might have an operations problem. And that's a great observation by Arctic Wolf. And frankly, High Point Networks is observing the same thing. So Matt, can you help us understand and let us know if you're seeing that phenomenon as well? You raise a good point about operations being a, really the core focus, I think, of your security operations center, right? Like. I, I, I read recently in a report from Oracle and KPMG that like most organizations, 78% of organizations have more than 50 security products and tools deployed in their environment. Like that's, that's an insane amount of just tools to keep an eye on. So if you're relying on tools alone, I think to solve your, your security problems or your security challenges, you might be fooling yourself, right? It's, it's almost that that's, that's a joke in and of itself as well. And so I think the key element is is really the human element. It's about having access to people, the processes, the technologies to extract a maximum value from your existing security tools. It's not about ripping and replacing, it's about making them operate with optimal efficiency and extremely high efficiency. So Arctic Wolf is this SOC as a service, security operations center as a service provider with this security operations platform first mentality. And that is something that I've never seen before, Matt, until you and I started to talk. And and what I think that means is that, you know, you're all of this technology, your SIM, your EDR, your cloud monitoring, your configuration benchmarking, your risk management, and, and all of that stuff. But to me, it means you emphasize security operations first. And I mean, that's different. That's a game changer. And at the tip of that spear is this named, dedicated concierge security team. So, so what is that, Matt? Can you help our, our friends at the Wolf Bar here uh, understand that a little deeper today? I think you really hit on it there, Dean. Like it's, it's our view at Arctic Wolf that cybersecurity has an effectiveness problem, right? Like despite being in an industry where the annual spend is over $120 billion a year, on thousands of security vendors, there's still, last year alone, there were still nearly 4,000 publicly disclosed data breaches. So, you know, most of these occurred, most of these breaches occurred, not because the security tool actually failed to, you know, kick an alert or actually raise, a, raise elevate an event, um, but really it occurred because there, somewhere along the process, along the kill chain, there was an event or an alert that was ignored. And it might have been deprioritized or overlooked just because the capacity didn't exist to actually act on that. And so I think this really speaks 
to the need for having a team, you know, of security operations experts behind you, right? It's the human element. You need people that have that expertise um, and the passion for cybersecurity to not only be able to detect things in real time um, and respond to sort of those, those, those threats around the clock, but also need to be there with you every step of your security journey to really help you execute your strategy. Um, and I think in doing that, that's really what helps to improve your security maturity over time. And this is really what our concierge security team is all about. So the concierge security team is continuously delivering security effectiveness and, and security operations through coverage, expertise, and strategy. And I think that's really at the core of, of the CST. So Matt, I look at the concierge security team like this. It's, it's like a professional football team comprised of all of these Hall of Fame athletes. And they're like your existing technology controls in some sense. These athletes are the best that money can buy. They are the best at throwing the ball and kicking the ball and blocking and etc. But man, if they don't work together as a cohesive unit, those individual players will never win. Um, however, with a plan, a playbook, a strategy, uh, like the Arctic Wolf Operations First philosophy, frankly, in my analogy, the probability of, of them winning increases exponentially. And um, I, again, I think this is why operations are so critical. Thoughts on that, Matt? Yeah, I think, you know, diving into the, the concierge security team a bit further, I think you're absolutely right. I think, you know, you can almost look at the CST as being your security operations coach, right? I think they're there for you every step of the play, right? Every step of the way when you're thinking about just generally security events that are coming at, at you in real time. And they're also there to, you know, tweak, maybe create custom rules that are unique to your, your environment, or they're there to help coach you along your security journey. So you know, you know what to consider next and you know what types of things uh, that you should put in place. So I love that analogy. I think it's uh, incredibly smart. Um, and I think that's exactly it. It's when you have excellent operations, the probability of, you know, defending against modern cyber threats like that increases exponentially as well. So yeah, I, I think that's a great analogy. So Matt, diving into the concierge security team a bit deeper, it looks like there are three pillars or components that really kind of make up the day-to-day -day operations. And I look at it as number one, coverage, number two, expertise, and number three, strategy. And uh, can we dive into each of those a little bit more? Yeah, I think, I think those are three, the three core elements of the CST. And when we look at coverage, we're really talking about the 24 by seven continuous monitoring, I think is first, right? It's looking at your environment and making sure that it is, you have somebody, you have eyes on glass that are continuously monitoring and watching that around the clock, especially in situations where you can't, where you maybe can't be there, your team is, is under resourced to the extent that you can't have people in places to provide that coverage. So that's really the first thing. And then I think, the next element is it's great to detect those things around the clock, but you also need to be able to respond to critical events like as they happen. You can't, it, it makes no sense if you kick an alert and it's not acted on or responded to, and you know, weeks, days, months later. Um, and that's why we provide under, under sort of coverage, the CST delivers five minute response time. So really enabling our customers to, once they identify a critical risk or a threat, to rapidly contain it before it can spread um, uh, to somewhere else and really providing you with detailed remediation guidance on what it takes, whether it's patching or it's, a, it's an upgrade or whatever, whatever it happens to be to actually fix that, but responding very rapidly and helping you isolate that threat. And then I think the, the sort of last element or the, one of the other elements on coverage is really real-time remediation. So containing incidents, finding them, getting that guidance really quickly um, and being able to to detain uh, to contain that threat before it can spread across the environment. And the second component of the concierge security service, Matt, in my opinion, is expertise. So, what mostly makes up the expertise component of the concierge security service? Yeah, and I think one of the challenges there that drives the need for having expertise, and this is something that the CST provides, is the talent shortage. It's so hard to find talented security professionals or experts in the field um, and finding people that would have experience across a broad domain of cyber, of really cybersecurity in general. You might find an expert in endpoints or an expert in firewalls or IDS, IPS as an example. And so when I think about expertise, 
what you get with the uh, concierge security team is really access to security operations experts. So these are people that are well versed in the processes that need to take place in order to detect and remediate threats and also have the unique knowledge of your environment um, and accreditations like, you know, CISSP, they might have CISM or, or various designations, but the folks on the CST have those as part of their, their sort of like uh, their, their expertise. And then I think being able to do that and apply it in a way, apply that expertise and the knowledge of your environment to do things like proactive threat hunting, right? Where you can, you can perform activities around daily threat hunting for suspicious activity across the environment. And the only way you can do that is if you do have expertise and unique knowledge of the environment. And I think building on that, that's sort of the last point I'll make is, you know, if, if, you're, if all you're doing is looking at the 10,000 alerts a day, I mean, you can't glean any intelligence out of that. You need to have the expertise of really understanding what to look for. And so one of the other things under expertise that the CST provides are informed incident insights. And so that you can think of that as almost like security, like actual security intelligence, right? It's filtering out the noise and revealing, you know, what happened, the root cause, why it happened and what to do about it. And these are only things that you can do if you, if you have, uh, you know, access to expertise. And Matt, I think of the third component of the concierge security service as being strategy. Um, so what makes up the strategy component of the concierge security service? I think, you know, this kind of gets back to the whole aspect of a coach, right? I think for a lot of our customers, for a lot of people that are in the security space, it's, it's nearly impossible for them to be proactive, right? You know, if you think about all the alerts that are coming at you, you're trying to prioritize those, you're trying to make sense of it, you're, you're just trying to keep the lights on at the end of the day. And a lot of folks don't have the opportunity to be more strategic or apply a security vision. They, you know, they probably don't even know where to start. And so this is really the element under strategy where the CST provides those things. So we meet regularly with our customers to, to do a security posture review and understand like, what is the root cause? Is it a common thing of the threats that we're seeing? You know, what are the prioritized actions that need to happen to improve that posture over time? Um, and these folks are, they're named advisors. So this is a person that you can, you can lean on. You have a shoulder effectively to lean on when something goes bad, if it does, or just generally if you wanna ask questions of, but these folks are, they become sort of a trusted part of your organization because they're paired directly with you and, and that enables them to help execute on your strategy by delivering you know, tailored activities, whether it's, it's triage or the more strategic guidance, they can tailor, tailor that directly to you. Um, and all of this, I think, fits in with the, with the overall security journey because security is not a point in time thing. It's not a destination. It's really you know, the process of becoming more security aware and mature over time. And this is another element that the CST provides is that security journey guidance. So looking at those quarterly reviews to see how you're tracking uh, towards your overall vision, uh, helping you develop that as well. So designing, implementing, uh, as well as helping you set, you know, the parameters or really the objectives behind how you actually achieve your security vision. So, yeah, I think there's, there's definitely a couple of great elements there under strategy that folks are just, they're generally challenged with uh, meeting because they're stuck in, in the day to day. So Matt, you take all of those factors of the concierge security team into uh, account, the coverage, the expertise, and the strategy. And then the, the brilliant thing that you guys do is you place that stuff as close to the customers as you can through this dedicated named concierge security team where they, they almost literally become an extension of you know, the, the customer's internal security team. And, I think that's brilliant and I think that's absolutely necessary in order to fill the gaps and to provide the best customer service that, that a, a SOC as a service provider can and to amplify the, the value of the tools that the customer has in place. And in my opinion that, that I'm aware of, I'm not aware of any other SOC as a service security operations center provider as a service that, that does this. And um, maybe there are others, Matt, but I just haven't seen them. And was just wondering if you could expand on that thought. You know, the keyword there that you mentioned is, is tools, right? Like if tools were enough to solve the problem, they would have already solved it by now, yet we're still spending billions, hundreds of billions of dollars a year on security 
and it's not enough. And really the, the issue isn't about deploying more products or more tools. It's that these things only compound the issue. If you put, you know, more and more uh, tools into the environment, effectively alert fatigue increases, blind spots further increase. It's really about working with your existing environment to make, you know, your existing tools more efficient and more effective. And that's really the operations piece, but you're right. It's not something that's solved by an independent tool set. It's something that needs to really unlock the efficiency from all of everything that is in the environment to make it work and operate more effectively. Matt, can you help me paint a picture around these two types of operational challenges that I frequently see? So like number one, on one side of the coin, you have an enterprise type of environment with dedicated security folks. They're highly trained, well-funded and so forth, but they need gaps filled or time loosened up for their staff. In other words, more bandwidth for their, their kind of internal on-prem staff to get things done. And then number two, on the other side of the coin, you might have like a, a smaller business with uh, just a, a few folks, kind of a jack of all trade, very talented type of folks that are trying to do the impossible, frankly. They're trying to run the business of IT, the security of IT, and then just the, the infrastructure of IT. And in, in either case, both of those businesses need help right now. And a lot of times the operational help right now. And I think Arctic Wolf fills gaps in either of those situations. So can you expand on that thought, Matt? I think on the, on the large enterprise side, if you're, if you're sort of the, the organization that's large enough to have the benefit of actually having a security operations center in place that you likely built on your own, just to do that effectively, even if you're thinking about doing this, you need to have between 12 and 18 people you know, just to provide basic coverage. Um, that's to account for shifts, for holidays, for illnesses, for other time off, things like that. Um, and that doesn't account for things like skill atrophy, right? Like over time, if they're just brought in to do one thing, they may not be learning other aspects of security. And so, you know, it, 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 when, it, when attrition happens, which happens a lot in this industry and security in general, they're kind of stuck. And so, this is where I think the benefit of having access to a concierge security team really like amplifies the horsepower of your existing SOC if you're a large enterprise customer because you know you can move some of those mundane tasks um, you know and really the toil over to the CST that can provide that 24 by 7 coverage so you don't have to worry about staffing folks around the clock as much or, or really as frequently and more importantly they help to filter out the noise so that alert fatigue goes out the window, the blind spots going out the window because you have the coverage. And overall, the existing SOC is able to operate, I think, more efficiently and effectively. You're not wasting time, you know, running false positives to ground. I think, you know, to, to just highlight one aspect of the Forrester report that recently came out. So a recent uh, Forrester total economic impact report came out on Arctic Wolf. And it looked at this exact use case of building you know, your own security operations center. So this concept of like a DIY SOC. And it found that with Arctic Wolf, if you're going the DIY route, you're actually able to get a 411% return on your investment uh, by working with Arctic Wolf and a payback period of less than six months and a return to value of less than a month. So you know, in terms of building a SOC, it takes a long time um, and maintaining it and operating it in-house and internally is really difficult. And that's just the, the enterprise aspect. I think it's one about increasing efficiency. But you mentioned too about, you know, sort of the small business and those folks are challenged as well because they likely don't have a team, you know, or they have a small team that is, you know, security is just one of the thousand other things that they have to do throughout the day. So given that most, most organizations or companies see 5,000 alerts a day, when you put that on a small team, it's impossible to be able to triage everything, you know? let alone, you know, know what to focus on or become more, more strategic uh, with your security posture. Like having an operations approach and working with a company like Arctic Wolf to, to help with this is providing, you know, an element of taking away that toil from, from the customer so they can focus on what they need to. Um, and especially for a small team, there's no way they can staff their security operations approach 24 seven. They just don't have the resources. And so you instantly get that with Arctic Wolf, which I think is, probably the most important thing. Uh, but then you have, a you have a staff, you have access to experts at Arctic Wolf that have, you know, 
expertise in a number of different security areas. So it's, it's really about performing those functions around the clock and then having sort of like an extension of your existing IT team, no matter how big or small you are. Let me tell you about a quick story in regards to this. I was aware of a successful business, small business, a uh, fantastic small security team, but just explosive growth. And since the business was so successful, it was challenging for the small security team to keep up with this, this rapid growth. Now, the business could buy and spin up tools, controls, technology quickly and do it all day long. But what was super challenging was in what, what, what really held them back and created risk. I mean, business risk and in regards to like loss opportunity and then also cyber risk was it the challenge or the inability to scale their security operations um, in parallel or with pace of this explosive growth and um, not only that 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 business risk the cyber risk but also kind of the compliance obligation that came with that if that makes sense um, and I mean, that needed to happen for them like right now. And I see Arctic Wolf kind of filling or addressing that type of scenario or that type of gap. So Matt, just wondering if you've ever seen anything else like that as you speak with people across the United States and beyond. Yeah, I think all the time. And I think one of the things that you highlighted there is, is really around scale, right? It's, it's how do you scale the organization to meet that growth from a, your security operations? How do you scale that to meet that growth? And I think you know, that's scale is certainly one of the benefits of, of the Arctic Wolf platform, you know, both in terms of pricing predictability, um, as well as this technology and business growth. I think bo both are really important, you know, so when we think, I think we chatted about this last, last episode, but one of the things with regards to having a scalable approach to pricing is that, you know, we, we look at that as, as wanting to provide coverage for your attack surface, right? So number of users, number of servers, et cetera. And what that does is it gives you clear line of sight into how your security budget needs to evolve as your business expand or how it will evolve. You can, you can get some predictability on what that looks like. Then the next element I think is around, you know, preparing for technology growth and, and how do you do that and how, how our platform scales in line with new technologies that you may adopt, which is exactly what it does. Um, but even considering how your attack surface can change over time. And in some cases overnight. So one example would be, you know, the scenario, the work from anywhere scenario that we're in right now, like present day, your, your environment, like you're probably your, your network, your operations, everything like went from being somewhere north of 90% office based, you know, needing to manage your internal networks and your endpoints that are on your actual corporate network um, inside the office um, to, to a hundred percent the other way remote, like when a hundred percent remote overnight. And I think, now that your entire workforce is distributed and they're connecting to critical systems over unsecured Wi-Fi and from personal computers in some cases. And, you know, it's, it's really important to be able to, to retain that visibility into endpoints when you're working from home. And so that's one of the things that we help with is getting the telemetry, being able to scan for vulnerabilities on those host devices, um, even containing them if necessary, if it becomes infected with ransomware or some level of malware. Um, and since our platform ingests data from multiple different sources um, and connects to, we can connect to new log sources very, very easily and simply, whether that's new log information or new threat intelligence, we can take that into the platform very simply um, and, and help to maximize coverage that eliminates these blind spots when you have a significant event like what we're in right now that completely calls for the complete re-architecture of your network and, and the challenges that that can bring. Matt, in regards to this security operations first mentality, which I completely agree with, um, I think it's important to note that the Arctic Wolf platform, that is the security operations component and the technology stack of your offering, if you will, is completely agnostic when it comes to plugging into a business's environment and their operations. And because of that, the I believe the Arctic Wolf platform can quickly, if not immediately, amplify the operations of a business or the technology stack that a business has invested in that perhaps they're not getting 
a lot of value out of today. So in other words, no matter where a company is in their cybersecurity journey, if they're enterprise, medium, small business, and no matter where their capability is at, I believe Arctic Wolf can augment and amplify that uh, rather quickly. What do you think, Matt? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's, you know, we, we look at really providing coverage for your entire attack surface. So whether that's your endpoints, your networks, internal and external networks, your cloud environments, um, even down to, you know, looking at your users through things like Active Directory and understanding potentially even your exposure to the dark web. I think it's really about providing visibility, maximum visibility across your entire potential attack surface. Matt, I want our friends on the Wolf Bar to honestly imagine in their businesses and their environments what their general time to remediation is if a true significant incident were to occur. And think, is that time to remedi remediation in line with your business objectives and your risk tolerance? Then think of how your existing tools might have been more effective with eyes on glass 24-7 how your remediation time may have significantly dropped and, and how your overburdened security staff may have been more effective and so forth if you had a security operations partner and platform in your corner. And in short, Matt, I've seen opportunities for simple and quick remediation missed. Um, and in a large part, this is due to struggling security operations. And just kind of wanted to know your take on it, Matt. Yeah, it's a really good point, Dean. I think, you know, if you, you talked about the mean time to, to respond or to effectively remediate, for most organizations, that can be 214 days. That's, that's, you know, months that a threat is lingering in your environment just waiting to do some level of damage, right? And, and you probably don't even know it's there. So if you just think if like, you know, the, if our audience kind of steps back and takes the thought of that, first of all, are you able to answer that question, right, that Dean kind of asked here? Do you know how long it actually takes you to respond and what that what that level is? Because most don't. And on average, if it's 214 days, that's a lot of time. That creates a lot of risk for the organization. Um, it's also one of the reasons that we find latent threats in more than 70% of our new customer environments. Like those are threats that have just been hanging around in the environment, unbeknownst to the customer, unbeknownst to the IT team for any length of time. And so I think it's a good point to think about, you know, what is your current sort of workflow and process that you follow for understanding and identifying? So your mean time to identify, but also how long is it actually taking you to respond or recover from those threats once you actually identify them? Well, Matt, I see the bartender over here just gave us the last call again, so we better wrap things up for today. But I'd like to thank all of our friends for dropping by the Wolf Bar again to have another great conversation with Matt. Of course, underneath the the golden light of the, the wagon wheel chandelier up there. And as I think back, we covered a lot today about operations, and specifically why operations must be at the center of your security operations center. Why you may not have a tools problem, but might have an operations problem. And of course, how High Point Networks and the Arctic Wolf Partnership can cover all of your security needs backed by the High Point Networks security team and our industry leading products and services and, and reputation, which we've built literally almost over 20 years now. So please click on the subscribe button down there so that you'll have all the information on upcoming Arctic Wolf conversations, uh, specifically the, the Wolf Bar conversations and, and any other content that we'll have out there. And please leave us with your comments, questions and suggestions because that directly drives future conversations and, and episodes that we'll have with Arctic Wolf and others. And until then, I would just like to again thank everybody for dropping by today. And thanks for joining Two Wolves in a Bar. See you again soon.